Howdy. Just want to make a quick video and show you my field reload kit for black powder. I carry in this bag and I can just throw it in the gun bag or, well, normally it'd be in the, my backpack and not my gun bag. Uh, this is more uh, sitting around at night around the campfire and keeping myself occupied. But these are the contents and I just want to go through them real quick and, and show you what I've got. Clearly for my reloading process, this isn't everything. The, the primer, new primers aren't here, the black powder or my shot. Uh, they won't fit in this little bag, so I keep them separate. But I just want to go through the contents of this real quick and show you. And this really shouldn't be in there. This, uh, I think I've showed this in another video. This is what I use when I'm muzzle loading the single shot shotgun. I've drilled it out just big enough to take a 209 primer and that I can take the primer out with my fingernail. I don't really know why that's in this kit, but uh, I have another old brass shotgun shell that I drilled out the primer pocket much bigger and I'll explain why in just a second for that. So let's pretend I've been out hunting during the day <clears throat> and I have a I have a shot shell that um, I've unloaded the contents of it into an animal that hopefully is roasting over that fire we just discussed and I've, I've picked up my hole and here's what you got it's a hole with a spent primer so I take this piece and I can set it on a stump or a stick or whatever and set the shot shell on top of it with the old primer centered over the hole. So I'll have that setting on a stump. This was an old piece of round stock uh, that I had that I put it on a grinder so I can get it to focus. I didn't put the, the tip to a sharp point. I left it just a little bit square and that's so I can put it on the primer and using a stick. This is a terrible angle to demonstrate this, I know. But then I can baton out that old primer and it'll fall in the hole. Once that's done, um, this is an old antique hand priming tool. I'm sure a lot of you people have seen them before. But you would drop the shot shell in here, set your new primer over the hole, and this part of the handle has a little nub on it that you would close over the top and it would push in the new primer into the shell. Once that's been done, this hole would have a new primer in it. Now some of my shells, um, specifically most of my reloads, I, I cut this, this portion off and I roll crimp the shell down, but in this example, I uh, apparently grabbed one that had uh, the fold crimp on it, and that's fine. And if, even if in the field, that would not be an issue. And, You'll see why here in a little bit. So anyway, now I have this shell. It's got a new primer in it. What to do next? So normally I carry loose shot. I like number four shot. Uh, the squirrels where I live, number six, I might knock a little hair off of them. But number four will, will get pretty good penetration and take them out. So I'm, I'm typically, if I'm if I'm muzzle loading or I'm, I'm planning on doing this hunt and camp in conjunction, I'm carrying just a, a, another one of these, this old pill bottle, but with a uh, shot in it, number four. And so I'll bring my lead ladle. Originally this lead ladle folded in half, but I would have problems using it where when I would want to pour, the front half would want to just fold over as it was supposed to, you know, the whole thing fold in half to make a nice little compact unit. So I just went and crimped the back with a pair of pliers so it, it doesn't, it's it's fixed in this position now. The back end of it uh, is made so you can fashion and carve down a limb to stick in it so you have this really long handle and you're not touching the hot metal that's been in the fire. So I'd put my shot in here if I didn't want to use shot to reload the shell and put that in the campfire and melt that lead. And once that lead was melted, I could pour it into one of these two bag molds that I carry with me. This one is a 32 caliber round ball. 32 caliber is the same size as a double off buck that would be in a 12 gauge shell. So with, with this bag mold, I can make double off buck shot and this one is 71 caliber round ball, the pumpkin ball. So now I have the ability to have 
number four shot, buckshot, or for bigger game, a pig or whatever, I could load up a shell with the 71 caliber. So those three things go together. So let's discuss this fancy item next. This is a black powder measure. I know I've mentioned it in another video, but measurements of black powder uh, is called grains. Measurements of smokeless powder is also called grains. But grains in black powder is by volume. Grains of smokeless powder is by weight. It can, it can get very confusing and also very dangerous if you mix the two of them up. So, again, as I've said in another video, um, I, I shoot square loads, which would be the same grains by volume of black powder and my shot. Uh, I typically shoot 85 grains. And so let me see if I can get this thing. This measure goes up to 120 grains. And as the slide, it's like an old, you know, old syringes, um, as it goes down it creates a, a chamber inside this tube and so I would set this at 85 and I'll turn the you turn the thumb wheel and it locks it in place and so I dump in the powder until it's level I turn it at an angle so you can see this and then when you close the nozzle it would scrape off any extra so you guaranteed to get that amount and then I pour the powder into the shot shell After I put you know, a new primer in the powder, so now we're building a column in this shot shell, then I would take an overshot card, just a, a three quarter circle, and I would put down over the top of that and use this fancy tool that's probably 40 or 50 years old. This is what would come in a pump shotgun magazine to limit the number of shots that would fit in that magazine. Some states, you know, if you're hunting, you can only have three shells in it, but you're Typical magazine will hold four or five shells. So they put this inside the magazine at the factory. And if you reside in a state that you're not limited like that, you just take it out of your magazine. And this is a really old one. I don't even know where I got it. I just had it forever. But that fits down inside of a 12 gauge shell, pert near perfect. And so I'll have my new primer, powder, overshot card, and then I would use this and you know really get that powder in there nice and tight because you don't want any air gaps uh, with black powder from that point uh, I also carry sheep's wool that I don't have here because it doesn't go in that bag and I put some sheep's wool in there to create a wadding and I'll explain that in a few minutes I'll put another overshot card over the top of the sheep's wool it'll get packed in there tight again and now I have my, if I'm using shot, I go back to my 85 grain measurement I have here. Same process with the black powder. Put in my 85 grains of shot. It gets another overshot card. And now we're left with a way to close this up. With this particular shell, like if I was reloading this particular shell, I'm not worried about that star crimp. I suppose I could fold it back down and maybe use this to finish it off. I don't know. I, I wouldn't normally do that. So I'll carry a, this old paraffin candle and a lighter goes in there and I'll just light it and just let the, the wax drip in there and cover that overshot card up. That's at top. I hunt with a single shot shotgun with a three inch receiver. So as long as this shell is not longer than three inches, I'm not worried about this being open and, and a little bit longer. It doesn't matter. It's a single shot. Couldn't do that with a semi-automatic or a pump or something like that. If, uh, if I've trimmed it off, I don't have as much room to put wax in there, but that's okay. Now you've seen in some of my other videos in my shop, I have a, a roll crimper that's mounted to the bench that if I've had this, this trimmed off, I'll actually roll crimp it down on top of that overshot card. Um, with the kit, what I've got here, I, I can't roll crimp in the field, but I do have a handheld roll crimper on order, but it's coming from overseas. And when that arrives, it's gonna go in this kit too. And then I'll just be cutting this off. You know, if I was in the field, I just whacked it off and, and roll crimp it right onto the overshot card. 
and then I'd be ready to go again. So that was probably all clear as mud. I just wanted to show you what I keep in this little little uh, bag that I made here. Don't judge my leather work. I'm not a I'm not a craftsman, but um, and again, I'll just throw that in the backpack for that night if I want to reload some of these shells. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Bye.